Browns versus the Commanders. The new year is right around the corner. What's the new year's resolution that you want for the Cleveland Browns? Fantasy football championships, best bets, and of course, tons of Browns talk coming up right now on the Sick Podcast with Andy McNamara. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Andy McNamara. The sickest Cleveland Browns podcast. Cut back by Chubb. He's to the 10. He's still running to the 5. He dips outside left. He's going in. Touchdown. What a run. Nick Chubb. It's going to be sick. Hope everybody had a very Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. New Year's right. I got my holiday theme sweater, folks. This is from my late great grandfather, Jack McNamara. I've been gone a long time, but I, I wear this every holiday season. Also, in honor of the Christmas Story movie, The Old Man. My old man has one too. Have, have you guys seen the new one, The Christmas Story Christmas? That one was great. I loved watching that. That was a, a really good, good one for Cleveland fans and uh, just holiday movie buffs all over the place. All right, people. Enough festive. We'll have some giveaways. Nick Chubb jersey giveaway, all autographed. I'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show. We'll have our sick picks, our best bets, try to make you a little money going into the New Year Fantasy Football Championship, right? Weekend or DFS contest, even if you're out of it. So we'll have those updates for your fantasy football team, get you set for that championship weekend. But of course, there's lots of news surrounding our Cleveland Browns, officially eliminated from the playoffs. But the news doesn't stop, and they have a chance to take that next step forward, hopefully in the development of Deshaun Watson as they head into Washington to take on the Commanders. And to talk some Browns, let's bring in senior Browns and NFL analyst Fred Greetemont. Fred, how are you, sir? Doing great, Andy. How you doing? Very good, sir. Thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it, as always. Uh, Before we get into this uh, Browns-Commanders matchup, which has more interest, I think, from the developmental side and, and next steps rather than what it means in the standings. Um, but some news and notes to take care of. Miles Garrett was disciplined uh, one play, one series in the Saints game and came out and said there was a miscommunication. What are you hearing about that? Well, I think last week he missed two days. He didn't show up for practice. Um, and I think <clears throat> at the beginning of that, I don't think he necessarily called. There was something to do with that. He just didn't call in sick, so to say. Um, hmm. I remember Joe Woods saying he saw him in the building. So I think it must have been on Wednesday that there was something that it wasn't communicated. He didn't really want to go there today. He was, it's all behind him, misunderstanding. And he didn't foresee that happening again. I think it was a big to do about nothing, you know, from my standpoint. But, you know, needless to say, <clears throat> you know, Kevin Stavansky felt it was, he has some of these discipline things that to me are kind of like, really? No, right. I don't know about fines, but, you know, Grant Delpit sat out the first play of a game earlier yeah. in the year, you know, and it's like, wow, <clears throat> you know, I'd be a little more for, hey, bench the guy because he just missed seven tackles in a row or, <laughs> or whatever, you know, it, yeah. but yeah, that's, so that's there in that. I don't think there's much to it. Well, and the, I'm glad you brought that up because accountability has been a big issue from my standpoint anyway for this this team. It seems like if you're rightly or wrongly the perception, you're a draft pick, not a problem. Well, yeah, one series. What what did that teach Grant Delpit? What did that teach Miles Garrett? And you're going to play Miles Garrett regardless, but especially more so the Grant Delpit stuff. The lack of discipline and accountability, I, I think, Fred, has been such a, an, an issue um, on both sides of the ball this year. Yeah, I mean, I'm not privy to see behind the scenes, you know, how Stefanski, you know, deals with things. But <clears throat> excuse me, it's it's I don't I'm not I'm not saying you have to be a ranter, you know, and a grab the yeah. face mask guy and throw him down stuff. But I do think there's got to there's got to be at least to me a little bit more of accountability from the aspect when a guy isn't playing well, you know. Yeah. yeah. And and OK you're benched, you know, they make no changes. I mean, anybody, just a casual fan watching the game most of the time can see, you know, the defensive tackles getting blown off the ball or guys not making tackles or getting out of the way. And 
it doesn't seem to be any repercussions for it. Now, like you said, if it's a lower tier guy, you know, they'll make them inactive like Perry and Winfrey or something right. like that earlier in the season to try to teach them a lesson. But I guess I would like to see a little more. Um, hey, you just screwed up. Everybody saw it. You are, you have been benched and right. I just don't see any changes. You know, you can see a guy getting beat over and over in a game. And even for the sake of just looks, they don't bench or replace anybody. If they do, it's very minor or cosmetic, you know, and you could say maybe they don't have anybody. Well, then that's a problem too. So sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I do think, I do think the, to me, I wrote a story this week about their mantra when he got hired was tough, smart, accountable. And I saw anything but that last week in that game. And for most of the season and even the last two seasons, you know, I, I think they get out physical. I think mentally tough, all those things. I just don't see it. Sure. There's conditions, but both teams play in it. And so that's one area I really think you got to address. That's right. And you can find some of Fred's great work on the OBR.com and on Twitter at Fred Greetham and the number nine. And Fred, that's, you brought that up perfectly. Tough, smart, accountable all year. None, nothing. Nothing. Not accountable. We just talked about tough run defense. I don't think so. Now, whether that's they're not big enough, the team was built wrong, whatever. Tough. No. And smart. You also said it. The lack of adjustments. This is what drives me nuts. It seems like the game plan before the week starts, before the game starts. This is the game plan. I see. So even bad teams, I see coaches make adjustments. This it is all whatever was planned beforehand. And there's no adjustments. It drives me nuts. I don't know if that's analytics. I don't know if that's <clears throat> bad game planning. I don't know what it is. But it seems like those three words that they keep using, they've done none of that this year. Well, yeah. And, you know, and I, I feel a good example um, with Jacoby Brissett. They had some of the best opening drives, you know, every week. They would take the ball, go right down the field on offense and get a touchdown. And at worst, a field goal, it seemed like. And then every series – would go down and down and it would end up not scoring, not scoring, punting, you know, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So obviously the teams <clears throat> made adjustments, but you didn't see a counter adjustment. Last week, the Browns get ahead 10 to nothing. Obviously the Saints adjusted and decided, you know, we're going to go to a strict running game. Boy, there was a, there was a, big idea when you're down your top three wide receivers and you have Andy Dalton and you have Alvin Kamara and Taysom Hill mm -hmm. and the Browns didn't adjust back to that. I asked Kevin Stefanski on offense, the best attribute in the wind or even without the wind to me uh, was Deshaun Watson running. They, they had him run a, a, a 12 yard touchdown. He went untouched and then he only ran it twice for us the game. I asked Stefanski why they didn't run the ball more because with the wind, his legs negate that. He yeah. can just run. The, the Saints were doing it. And he said, well, they made a good adjustment and they brought a safety down to watch the quarterback. Well, first of all, Marcus May, who I thought was their best safety, was inactive because he was injured. And so I would take my chances with Watson one-on-one -on -one out there in space with whoever they put in safety. So, I mean – I just, I kind of agree with you that they got a great plan going in, but if it goes askew, they don't know what to do. Think of the Falcons game, you know? Oh, the Falcons yeah. said, we can't throw with Mariota. We're going to give it to a guy I never heard of off the practice squad, Huntley, and set 10 straight times he ran the ball right at the gut, 75 yards, touchdown. They threw in another guy here or there. But ever since then, I feel like teams – said, oh, they have nobody that can stop the run. And so we've seen that all year. That's it. That's it. And here's the, the other thing that, that drives me crazy is from what you said, what Stefanski said. We heard from Joe Woods as well with just some of the almost – almost feels like defeatist attitudes. Like, well, they brought a safety down, so – it's like, oh, yeah. oh okay. So so that means, Kev, you got to figure what to do after that. Or Joe Woods, yeah, boy, they ran right up the middle and we couldn't stop it. Well, what's the plan to stop it? And then you say he doesn't think it's the uh, size problem with the tackles or the linebackers when I, I think most common fans can see you're getting run over and cannot or not knowing how <coughs> to tackle properly. The lack of adjustments comes up again. 
Well, I, I do think Andrew Barry, you know, comes into this because the mm-hmm. common fan and even a lot of us that cover the team on a daily basis said, you know, I know you don't value defensive tackles and and bigger linebackers to stop the run, but it sure looks like you like these athletic, faster, smaller guys. And what happens when the teams go away from the trend of passing the ball mm-hmm. back to smash mouth football? And that's what I was saying. That's what the Falcons and some of the teams just said, you know, we're just going to do that. And you didn't have the personnel to adjust to that. I realize a lot of it is just want to, because we've seen the Browns defense play well and even stop the run at times. But a lot of it is they just don't seem to want to, you know, and if they don't take the ball away, that's what really exposes it. You know, a lot of people, you know, you think of that game where I think the Ravens had 198 yards rushing, but the Browns took the ball away. Nobody worries about that. If they didn't get the turnovers, that's, again, all anybody talks about. In the previous Ravens game, I know it's going back, but I remember the Browns had just pulled within three with nine minutes to go. The Browns or the Ravens took over the ball after the kickoff, and they drove the ball the length of the field just running the ball. JOK stripped, you know, one of the running backs deep in Browns territory. And the Browns then had a chance to win the game. We all know how it turned out. But everybody kind of forgot that the Browns probably would have never got the ball back if it would have been up to them stopping the run. But that takeaway, and that's been the element, you know, that they weren't getting early in the year. And that's what really exposed it. I think the analytics tell them takeaways are so important you can get away with a bad run defense if you take the ball away and they didn't take the ball away at all until recently yeah exactly there's there's a lot to unpack for the offseason let's hit on this real quick the commanders game here Carson went back under center at least to start the game uh and talking about that physical running Brian Robinson now Antonio Gibson is out for you fantasy players Gibson is out for this game but Brian Robinson First of all, Fred, what a story. Guy gets shot, comes back. But this is as physical a runner and as straight ahead a, I'm going to go through you. And boy, if I was taking, if I was making some bets on the over for rushing or fantasy, I I think Brian Robinson could have a, a big day if the Browns don't adjust, which we've seen. They don't. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where, again, you know, I, I guess a bright spot last week, <clears throat> going to our point, they picked up Reggie Ragland off yeah. the street. He really looks out of place on the practice field, number 19. I mean, first of all, I don't know why they give that number out. But yeah. at linebacker, and he, he's a really big guy. He doesn't look like at all the linebackers they want. He looks bigger than the defensive tackles they have. But yet he led the team in tackles, had 10 tackles, and was really stopping the run some. That kind of proves our point. Mm-hmm. You got to have some of them guys in there. And so maybe, maybe they got lucky and maybe he'll be – be pretty good for the, a game like this. You know, Joe Wood said we were, they were impressed with him. So, yeah, to your yeah. point, the Washington's going to do that, you know, until the Browns stop them. The Browns built with the, with the back end, hoping with their cornerbacks and all that. But if teams don't have to throw, then that becomes a moot point because they're certainly not tacklers. So I think they're hoping, you know, Carson Wentz, they can get him to turn the ball over and, and some of those things. And so I think that's their best bet. But yeah, if they let Robinson just run over them, it's going to be a long day because yeah, they run. like to possess the ball. And the Browns, you know, I think are hoping with a 60 degree, sunny, non windy day to finally open things up and see a glimpse of what, you know, what they traded for. Yeah. With, the, with Deshaun Watson, open it up <laughs> into the end zone more than one time on offense. Ron Rivera is a smart coach, though. Uh, Fred, on the way out, new, we put out there on Twitter, at SickPodBrowns, at AndyMC81, the New Year's resolution you want for the Browns. For the Browns to take the New Year's resolution, what would it be for you? I I guess, you know, if, I don't know if this is the vein, but just to get overall physical and tougher in sure. 23, because as I wrote, the doggone Ravens, I don't know how they're 10 and five, but they find ways to win every week to get in the playoffs, even without their quarterback. And then the the bigger story to me is the Steelers. If you 
told me the Steelers would be a game ahead of the Browns. They just find ways to win. Even if they have a quarterback, whether he's good or not in the future, he's learning. And yet they have their one game ahead of the Browns with a game to go. I said to my colleagues, if the Browns would have beat the Saints and they would have won those, you know, even this Sunday, and they could get to the playoffs beating the Steelers, I would have bet my my car that they would lose to the Steelers in that game because they always lose that game. The Steelers always find a way to win. And yeah. that's that pains me to say, but those two teams in the division just just have a culture of winning. And I would think it's the toughness mentally and physical. And the Browns keep talking about how great a roster they have, but I don't see it on the field. Yeah, on paper, just like the numbers for analytics, all look good on paper, and sometimes they don't execute when it comes down to it. Fred, tell people where they can find your great work. Really appreciate the time today. Yeah, they can go to the OBR. It's orangeandbrownreport.com. The OBR.com or Twitter. It's right there, Fred Greetham 9 Most all my stuff's free. Um, they have a lot of other good stuff, film talk, breakdown, and, and all analytics and all that. But but my stuff's there, the Greetham angle. Excellent. Well, I've been a, a longtime viewer and uh, reader of yours. So really, really thank you for coming on. And happy New Year, sir. Thank you, Andy. Happy New right. Year. Thanks for having me. There you go. There he is, Fred Greetham9 on Twitter. You can get his work there. I think the Browns do pull this one out, folks. I'm going I'm going out in the new year, the last show of 2022, on a positive. I think the weather's nice. Deshaun Watson opens it up. The commanders can be had. They're tough. They're well coached. If they find a way to stop Brian Robinson or contain him, they win this ball game, in my opinion. Browns 28-21. Book it. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Hey, and how about the Buckeyes? Let's go, Buckeyes. College football playoffs. We'll get some college football playoff sick picks later on as well as they get ready to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. Oh, that's going to be uh, that's going to be a tough one. But fantasy football championship time, folks. Fantasy football championship time. Even if you're out of it, you can still play DFS. You get your questions in using hashtag AskAndy on Twitter at AndyMC81 at SickPodBrowns, Instagram at AndyMCSports. Make sure, sure too, folks, click the subscribe button. Click the notification bell, share the link, all that good stuff. But let's bring in now my guy from Trophy Smack. Boy, what a, a phenomenal company they are. I've had the pleasure of dealing with Matt Walsh, founder for a, a, quite a while now. But Chase Vernon, great fantasy content and podcast of his own content and social media creator for Trophy Smack as well. Chase, how are you, buddy? What's going on, man? How are you doing? Doing very well, sir. Very well. Look, I got my, ho my, my holiday sweater on, my Buckeyes gear. We're ready to rock and roll, man. Dude, I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to go, man. Like, I was told I was coming on, what, less than 24 hours ago. I was like, right. oh, dude, I'm ready for this, man. I can He's handle ready. this. This is nothing. This is nothing. You're, this is cake. That's right. You're ready. Ready to go. I, just like people are for their fantasy football championship. And this was a tough start because now, I'm sure like me, you're getting kind of flooded with questions coming out of that Thursday night game, right? People who... Maybe decide to get a little too cute and bench Dalton Schultz, who went off for over 20 fantasy points. Dealing with Derrick Henry, not that, like there's a lot to unpack from that standpoint and moving forward in this fantasy week. And to start with the Browns uh, uh, Commanders game, like I said, boy, I, I think with Brian Robinson, you don't think twice, especially with Antonio Gibson on, and you just play that guy as much as you can. Yeah, I mean, the Browns have been pretty brutal up against the running back thus far in the season, uh, poorest to, to say the least. Brian Robinson's a guy that they're going to run this week probably close to, to 20 times. He's going to see minimum, minimum 12 touches. You could see upwards of 15, and it's possible that he hits that 20 mark. I think Brian Robinson's a guy that I'm definitely going to be rolling out. But, I mean, you brought it up, man. People are getting real cute. Like, people are getting real <laughs> cute. I saw somebody play uh, Malik Davis because they thought, oh, man, they'll be they'll bench Ezekiel Elliott. So I ended up benching Travis Etienne for uh, from Malik Davis. And when you get too cute in these fantasy playoffs, like that, that's when you end no. up winning or losing the big bucks. That's it, man. That's it. You have to just go with the star. Lose with your stars, right? That's what I always think. Lose with the stars. Don't try to outthink. It's like the Browns with the analytics. They try to outthink, outsmart everybody. And what happens? You miss the playoffs again. I'm just, I'm bitter. That's, that's okay. We yeah, got hey, it. It's all right. It's all right. I, I understand. I understand. We, we, we got it. <laughs> you know what? Let's bring up a couple questions here uh, from hashtag Ask Andy on social media uh, at AndyMC81. We got uh, from Z Man for life. Says uh, Chris Goodwin, I assume he means Godwin, or Keenan Allen, half point PPR. Boy, Chase, that's a nice problem to have because Godwin's been popping lately. But Keenan Allen, since finally getting healthy, you can't sit Keenan out, can you? 
Uh, he's been a stud, and it's kind of funny because the area that the Rams actually struggle is underneath. This Rams defense, uh, they play like a, a soft coverage in terms of like the the slot guy. Typically, they like him to back up and make sure that the slant patterns don't go a little bit deeper. So when you have an opportunity to play one of these underneath guys up against the Rams, I typically say, hey, go right ahead. But Godwin's been pretty much the, the only guy over there on this offense who's been consistent. And up against the Panthers, like how could you even think about benching him? I mean, I it, at this point, I, I would personally go Godwin, but uh, Keenan Allen I don't think is a bad play up against the Rams. Like I, I wouldn't play probably Mike Williams, but I, I would definitely roll out Keenan Allen. And I would ask for that uh, tweeter, Z-Man for life. Um, is there a way to get both in? Like who's your <laughs> – yeah. is it three wide receiver? Who's your third guy? Who's your, your flex? There's, there's got to be a way to get Godwin in there too. Yeah, this is either a zero RB team or <laughs> like, yeah. you know, a, a 10 team league. It's got to be one of the two. It's got to be one of the two. Let's get another question up here. Hashtag ask Andy. Uh, let's see from at the real wicked number one. Need a flex spot. My options are Don Foreman, Michael Pittman, Jahan Dotson, or Zonovan Knight. Now, I got to say this. If it was Taylor Heineke, and I go with Dotson because he's been popping, but I don't really want to be trusting Carson Wentz, and I certainly don't want to be trusting Nick Foles with Michael Pittman this week. Do you, where do you go with this? Well, all right, so when we talk about John Dotson, he's actually had pretty significant production with Carson Wentz. Back before Carson Wentz got hurt, I think he had the two-touchdown game, and he had an mm. additional touchdown. It was like three, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And then didn't he catch a touchdown this past week or maybe the week before that from from Carson Wentz either way John Dotson he's been fire he's been great for this Washington offense and uh he's a guy that that they rely on but man I don't know if I can roll him out over Michael Pittman I mean I'm not going to roll out Zonovan Knight he hasn't been efficient uh you know we've seen his work somewhat subside you know Mike White is coming back which helps out his efficiency possibly but I I can't roll out Zonovan Knight in good faith and think mm -hmm. that he's going to put up enough fantasy points for for you to be to win a championship, you know, like I don't think the upside's there. Uh, meanwhile, he has a very low floor. Uh, as in terms of Deonta Foreman, like we started to see the the role kind of favor Chuba Hubbard uh, right. two weeks ago, and then last week they just went hard. Like it was kind of funny because the Lions were really good up against the running back in the previous like three to four weeks, and then they come in this week and it's like, like yeah, just open up the floodgates. Let's let Chuba Hubbard and Deonta yeah. Foreman just run all over him. Uh, the thing with with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is you don't play the running backs against them, especially when, when Vita Bay is healthy. So I would definitely check yeah. that report. I believe he sat last week. Um, you know, I would be a little bit more, I guess, uh, in favor of Deontay Foreman if Vita Bay is out, but not enough to say that he should be over Pittman or Jahan Dotson. Uh, and at this point I would most likely go with Pittman just because he is more of a focal point of that offense. They don't have Jonathan Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a favorable game script possibly. And, you know, I don't love, I'm not in love, obviously, with this offense, but, you know, it, it just could be more of a competitive game with the Giants. Right, it, it could. And Zonovan Knight, something to keep in mind as well, with Mike White under center, three games, went over 100 yards all three. That makes it a little, that's that extra little wrinkle there as well. But I think I'm with you. I'd probably go with Dotson just as a, um, probably gives you the safest play. Because that's the thing with, in the championship. If you're playing, DF, you know, if you have thrown in a DraftKings contest, you got to, you know, Throw in a flat, why not? But if you're talking championship, you want to be, to me, you, you want to kind of be that conservative bit a little bit, right? You want to make sure, okay, what gives me the best chance? And probably, like you, you mentioned, Dotson has had success um, with both quarterbacks, even though that Zonovan Knight with Mike White, that oh, that just makes me think of just for a second. So the Seahawks, it was kind of crazy. The Seahawks started up the year and they were okay up against the running back in the middle, you know, up against the running back on the ground. And they got really good for an extended stretch and they got really bad and they <laughs> kind of stayed that way. But I mean, last week up against the Chiefs, granted it is the Chiefs, they only allowed 69 yards rushing. Uh, what was it? Three weeks ago or three weeks prior to that up against the Rams, 69 yards rushing again. Uh, there's a world where the Seahawks actually do end up attempting to stop the running back and put pressure on the running back in the middle, which could end up opening up a game for Michael Carter in the receiving game, because that's where they really surrender a ton of yardage is actually to the running backs in the receiving game. They haven't played that many great running backs, and yet they still are, I believe, in the bottom three in terms of yards and receptions allowed to the running backs. So that's what I'm saying. Like, this could end up being like a Michael Carter game, and I just don't want to trust mm. Sonovan Knight, who, yeah, he had a, a great stretch with Mike Way. I just, I, it's so gross. It's so gross for me to, to think I that know. he could be the guy to go to to win a fantasy champ championship. It's not well. How about this for an extra problem? We look at the Raiders. Okay, Josh McDaniels hates our, hates your fantasy team, kids. He hates it. 
because he's benching Derek Carr. Think what you want, Derek Carr, real life. The guy can at least distribute the ball. Jared Stidham. Chase, Jared Stidham. Josh, what is it? Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams, we already know, is on the decline, but you're going to play Devontae Adams. And Darren Waller come. Now you got Jared Stidham in his 61 regular season snaps. That's disgusting. That's it sucks. is. It's gross. It's terrible. Well, like, all right. What, so what do we do? <laughs> here's the thing. Like, the Patriots scheme is very complex, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we've seen players struggle with it time and time again because Josh McDaniels asks his quarterback to do so much. And what he does is pretty much adjust – to whatever the defense is going to give up, right? So he wants this to happen, he wants this to happen, he wants this to happen, and he wants it to happen exactly like that. Players that have played for extended amounts of time that have not been in this system from the start uh, tend to struggle with it, and they they tend to adjust, or they tend to struggle to adjust. Mm -hmm. Derek Carr is a guy who has been very good in the very simplistic systems that he's been in, uh, but the complex systems that he's been in – it's not that he's he doesn't understand it or he's not intelligent. The guy's brilliant. It's just the fact of like having to adjust everything you've been doing your entire career to fit this guy's scheme. Yeah. And great coaches typically will adjust to their players, a la Andy Reid, but you know, and, and Mike McDaniel as well. They talk to their quarterbacks throughout the game, right? They say, Hey, what are you feeling? You know, mm-hmm. are, are you trying, like, you know, are you, are you getting hot right now? Are you feeling a little cold? What are you seeing out there? Yada, yada. And they adjust to help out the quarterback. Josh McDaniels wants to be the player he wants his player he wants his quarterback to be okay you're going to do this and then you're going to do this and you're going to do this Derek Carr dealt with it for long enough but he never really fully bought into the system in my opinion uh you just yeah. saw him doing different check downs you saw Josh McDaniels frustrated in the sidelines because he didn't do a certain thing that, that they were talking about prior to uh but Jared Stidham's been in this system he's been in the system for what now four years three years so at least Josh McDaniel knows that his quarterback will do what he wants him to do whether or not that's actually going to provide a win is, is <laughs> eh, you know, it's gross, right? So I think the biggest factor into this is like probably like halfway through the season, Derek Carr pretty much said, oh, screw the system. I'm just going to get Devontae Adams on, on every read and we're going to produce a bunch of yards. Is Derek Sidham also going to do the same thing? And eh, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. Now, is Devontae Adams a sit for this week? No, but if you're sitting there and you're looking at a lineup and you're like, okay, I feel safe because Devonta Adams is projected with this many points. So I'm going to play a safe option instead of playing an option with a low floor and high ceiling. I might be more inept to go with the guy with the high floor and low ceiling because yeah. if Devonta Adams goes out there and gets, you know, six receptions for 60 yards and he puts up half the amount of fantasy points that he's projected, the guy with the, the high floor, but low ceiling might not be able to get you over that hump for your opponent. So I would be more inept for lineups with Devonta Adams in it to play those those guys who have the this higher ceiling. Yeah, I agree. Let's say and, oh and by the way you're playing the 49ers defense. So there's yeah. that. That's, yeah, that's that, that, that's not fun either. You mix that mix that factor in. One more for you. Dolphins versus Patriots. You mentioned the Patriots. Now Teddy Bridgewater in we saw in relief and really when he is healthy for any extended stretch which isn't always or gets a chance. He is one of those quarterbacks that can be serviceable to make the pieces around him still fantasy relevant. He popped for 20 fantasy points back, I think, week six. And in that week, Jalen Waddle went for over 100 yards. Um, where are you at with the Dolphins? Because to me, I'm thinking I'm not I'm not nervous about any of the pieces around it because I think Teddy can distribute the ball with those pieces where you want to get them the ball quickly in space. And a dink and dunk uh, strategy is perfect for Teddy. Yeah, I mean, we talked about how Mike McDaniel uh, is a guy who ends yeah. up – maneuvering his system to fit his quarterbacks and luckily teddy bridgewater isn't that far off from tua in terms mm-hmm. of their skill sets he's he's i always saw him as like a poor man's tua um yeah. you know going into the season i was like oh this is a perfect fit you know it's kind of like josh johnson backing up uh you know russell wilson at the beginning of the year i just thought it was a good fit so um you know or Brissett, for example with mm-hmm. sean watson where he has that, that mobile upside but you know he's, he's not going to be to sean watson anyways uh, Bridgewater is going to be able to get the ball to his playmakers. He's going to be able to get them involved. It's just going to be, hey, what did the Patriots decide to take away? Because that's what they're very good at is taking away one option. We've seen it year after year after year after year. Uh, and so they have to decide, are they going to let Waddle beat him? Or are they going to let Hill beat him? And, you know, my thing is, hey, they're probably going to let Hill beat him. But then how much of the rushing opportunity does McDaniel actually mix into this one to the point of like, hey, is – hill even if they try to take him away is he ever going to see enough volume or is he going to get enough big plays if they do try to take him away 
to be able to, to get to that point, get to that threshold. And I don't know if that's the case. I'm, I'm very nervous rolling out Hill this week, but I, I, you still got to play him. It's Tyreek Hill, right? If he gets one play for, yeah. for 90 yards and a touchdown, that's more than what anybody else on your bench would have likely gotten you anyways. Yeah. So you got to play Hill. You got to play Waddle this week. I'm, I'm sold that Waddle will actually have a decent performance because the secondary receiver typically does up against the Patriots. The real question is, do you play Jeff Wilson Jr. or Raheem Mostert? And that's mm-hmm. where... I'm like really tilted and I don't have an answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, if Jeff Wilson, I like the tandem for a couple of weeks, then he fell totally off and most are busted loose. So I'd lean more towards most but whenever you're in a committee situation it can turn on a dime, right? It can, it can switch it up. So it's uh, it, it's tricky folks. It's very, very tricky. Now, Chase, we got to talk about some trophy smack here, baby, because yeah. trophy smack, this is where for your fantasy league, you go for not just trophies, but championship belts, which are super sweet. Um, even like last place fun ones too, right? You know, like uh, yeah, the, the toilet bowl. The, the, yeah, the, the toilet bowl. They, you guys have such fun stuff. And actually in the link to this show, in the description to this show, you can click and hey, you can get a, a, a championship ring to go along with, a free championship ring to go along with the purchase of a trophy, of a, a belt. And I'll, oh, let's see what you, look at that. Oh, that's a Ooh. Bush Light championship ring right there. There you go, yeah, baby. Yeah, shotgun contest. I got, I got nice. some Austin Eckler uh, memorabilia. From the oh. Scott Fishbowl LA. Nice. We got all sorts of fun stuff. Ugh. Tons of fun stuff. I, I love that. All sorts of fun stuff. Well, let's we got belt, championship baby. belts, baby. We got championship belts. You can customize these as well. Put whatever design you want on them. We oh, have these God. massive, massive, obnoxious trophies that you can ride into your drafts <laughs> with. This is not sitting on the table, folks. This is literally on the ground because it's, it's on so the floor. Cool. It's on the floor. Oh, this thing geez. is almost five feet tall, man. It's crazy. <laughs> And it's so obnoxious. It's so crazy. But the coolest thing that we have, and, and I don't know if I was supposed to talk about this because this necessarily isn't just for fantasy football. This is for like everyday life, right? Like okay. you can do, uh, you know, up, upcoming, we have Valentine's Day. You can get a picture of you and your girl. You can get a picture of somebody's dog in there. I actually got one for my mom uh, for Christmas. I got my little brother a picture of his, uh, his family. Um, but it's called Wall Smack. Wall and, Smack. Yeah, man, this is sick. So I got this for myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it matches your sick podcast uh, color scheme. By I the love way. it. I so love it. It's a sheet of metal that they print super, super high quality, as you can see. Um, and I don't have the magnets right next to me, but uh, you can actually get magnets, right? And you place these magnets on the wall and then the, the stuff just like sticks to it. So if you want to like switch That's it out, awesome. like this was, this was a prototype when we were first doing it, but this right here, this is DeAndre Swift. Sorry, my fingerprints are all over it from, from holding it. Like, you can get the smaller size. You can get the bigger ones. But right. if I wanted to switch this out and put up, you know, this one, all I got to do is take this off the wall and put this one up. So, you know, if you've got a man cave, right, and you're sitting there watching football with your buddies and you got, like, a hot girl that's, you know, up on the wall and then the man cave's done, the, the party's over, and then you know your wife's coming in, you just end up slapping, you know, something else up on there. Something so. else. I <laughs> So yeah, it's it's absolutely it's it's a blast, man. It's, it's a it. brand new product. We just launched it. Uh, people have really really flocked to it, especially with the World Cup. It was huge. With the World Series, it was huge. And now for fantasy football, if you guys get a league winner, right? If you have a player on your team, let's say Austin Eckler, who we're rolling a lot with, as you mentioned, like yeah, we, we we're do. giving away a belt with him. It's going to be insane. If you have Austin Eckler, by the way, sorry, I'm, I'm sidetracking. If you have oh. Austin Eckler on your team, and you end up winning the fantasy championship. We're going to have details coming out. You can go over there to Twitter, uh, at Trophy Smack over there on Twitter, and you guys can actually see the details that are coming out. should be out in the next few days of how to actually win a signed and autographed Austin Eckler belt. Uh, oh. it's, it's, it's awesome, man. I'm stoked for it. So you just have to have them on your team. But anyways, if you got a league winner, right, like let's just say this is Austin Eckler, and you want to put league winner across the top, you can do that. Um, you know, to, to remind everybody every time that they walk into your man cave that, hey, Austin Eckler won you the fantasy championship you in 2022. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, just uh, go check that out over there at trophysmack.com. The products are just nonstop. The customized belts are one of my favorite things that, that's over it. there. The the massive obnoxious trophies that you can ride into your draft like a like a pony or unicorn yeah. next year. It's it's a blast, man. It's so much fun. Well, it, you guys have such cool – and the belts too because I got to hold them at the Fantasy Football Expo in Canton back in yeah. August. Um, these are like – you know, you're, you're wearing like the, the Hulk Hogan championship belt there. Now, like these are heavy, big belts. This isn't your – you know, it's not no. foam. This is like real plated metal. This is cool. It is, man. Heavy. It is. Look you at that. Bend it. Like a lot of these like other trophy companies and stuff, like you, you can, can end up it. bending them. You can't bend this one. No. Like I could try as hard as I can. We have to use a, a – a, like a this giant metal press – that goes down and actually like 
uh, fence so the belt cool. so they fit around your waist. Like it's it's like heavy duty stuff. It's all have like high quality. Everything that we do over there at Trophy Smack is. Uh, you'll never get anything cheap looking or, oh, no. or plastic outside of the loser awards like the mirrors and stuff that we have. It's like a joke. Yeah, no, it, it's great. And again, folks, hey, you can go the link right in the description of the show right here. We're going to put it out on social media as well to jump in and get your championship winners, losers, all the fun stuff all the way in between. Chase, uh, tell people where they can find you on social and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens this weekend. Well, go check us out over there, by the way, Trophy Smack on Instagram. Uh, we're pumping over there. It's been crazy. We've tripled our growth over the past uh, about six weeks. So it's, it's just been absolutely insane pushing for 40,000 followers here soon. So go check us out over nice. there on Instagram and then at Trophy Smack over there on Twitter. Uh, once again, blowing up over there on Twitter. It, it's been a lot of fun, you know, helping that program really get off the ground. And then you guys can go follow me over there at FF underscore intervention. Um, do a DFS show with player profiler. We actually have it today at six o'clock Eastern time over there at Road to Wonderworld. Uh, yeah. And, and go check us out over there. Good player stuff, profiler. man. Listen, love having you on trophy smack folks. Check it out. It's amazing. Let's do this again soon, brother. Thank you. Sounds good. All right. Happy new year. There he goes. Chase Vernon from trophy smack. Very cool. And like I said, folks, hey, your fantasy football championship. If you buy, a trophy or belt through the link in the description here, you get a free championship ring that Chase just showed you. How about that? That's a pretty sweet deal from, from old Andy Mack for you on the sick podcast. Pretty sweet. So you can do that, check that out, share with your commi league commissioners and all that. So lots of fantasy football talk. However, there's the college football playoffs. Well, let's, let's be singing some hang on Sloopy. Oh, wait, I O. Let's go Buckeyes over Georgia. Let's get to some sick picks. It's time for sick picks. All right, so we're looking at this, and let's let's start. You know what? Let's start with the NFL, and we'll swing back to some college football. So some prop plays that I really like this week. You got Kansas City hosting the Denver Broncos. Who would have thought the start of the year? The AFC West, myself included, thought this was just going to be must see TV every single week. Russell Wilson, oh man, Patrick Mahomes, yeah, Justin Herbert, Derek Carr's got Devontae. Adams. Total bust outside of the Chiefs. Uh, the Denver Broncos defense stinks. They're the fourth worst in the NFL for receptions allowed and uh, yards and receiving yards allowed. Travis Kelsey, last time that he's averaging uh, 77.9 receiving yards a game in 16 prior meetings against the Denver Broncos. They got nothing to play for. They fired their loser head coach and they're just in free fall. Over under set 72 and a half receiving yards. A prop play for Travis Kelsey pays minus 115. Go the over. Take the over for Travis Kelsey. I think that's easy. Then you have the Philadelphia Eagles hosting the Saints. Now the Browns, we saw the Saints last week and the, the Saints playing with the strategy of a AFC North team and the Browns playing like they play in a dome. Thanks to Anna Di Podesta. Yeah. Well, we'll have plenty of time in the offseason to talk about this mess. But the prop play... Devonta Smith to the Eagles, over under 0 0.5 receiving touchdowns. So to get a touchdown, he's plus 157 to get a touchdown. Now, I love this play because the Saints, they're all banged up. Um, you have now, it might be Jalen Hurts, might be Gardner Minshew. We have to track that going up. Uh, Hurts was seen throwing a little bit at practice, but could be Minshew if they want to save him. Gardner Minshew did fine last week and actually got it to Devonta Smith. They connected eight times for 113 yards and two touchdowns, 12 targets, 12 targets. That was great. So you see it with Smith. He has four total touchdowns over the last three games, whether it's Hurts, whether it's Minshew, nice play for an any time. Uh, I really like that. And uh, I would take Tampa Bay just to just smash Carolina. Just, uh, you know, Tampa Bay, they're going to be playing for, um, still playing for the division. Um, Carolina, nice job under Steve Wilkes. Nice job. They've got themselves a little bit together. Nice work. But I still think you're looking at uh, Tampa Bay as a, a straight-up winner there. Now, we go to the bowl games, right? We go to the bowl schedules, and we look at our um, Ohio State Buckeyes, six-and-a-half-point dogs to Georgia. So number four, Ohio State versus number one, Georgia, six-and-a-half-point uh spread there actually uh, depending what you're looking at you know what let me check our guys bet fred sports book oh i'll tell you about that that remind me i'll tell you about that in a sec um the bet fred sports book has at six six for the 
spread. And that went down from six and a half yesterday. So I'm, I'm feeling if you're looking at for the Buckeyes, if you want to go with your heart, I, that's what I'm doing. If you want to go for your, you know, with your heart, you go with the Buckeyes. The payout here, there we go. Buckeyes, straight up winner plus 210. Woo, boy. And yeah, it's at six, minus 110 to cover. I take the Buckeyes to cover that. I think it's going to be close. They got a lot to prove. George is good, though. But George has been way, George has been sitting back, folks, right? They've been sitting back, Buckeyes, chomping. For the first time in forever, the Buckeyes are underdogs. Coach Ryan Day, they're playing up that underdog role. You shouldn't be here. People don't think you should be here. And they're usually not about that, right? They're usually the favorites. So I think they can come in, and if they can start quicker than they usually do, notorious slow starters this year, you can shock them plus 210. And then the other college football playoff, TCU against Michigan. Uh, yeah, as much as I hate Michigan, that team up north, I don't really see, barring a catastrophe at, uh, of injuries, that they lose this game. Uh, spread seven and a half, Michigan. I'd probably take them to cover minus 110. Not going to get, not touching the money line. Over under 58. I'm going to take the under for that, minus 110 payout. Over under 62 in the Ohio State game. Under is 62. I think if Ohio State can keep that a little bit under, they might be able to. But both teams could go in the 30s. I might take the under if I'm feeling Ohio State. So we're going to do that. And then for um, the Browns game here, like I said, for if whatever the prop play is for Brian Robinson, take the over for the rushing. Commanders, two-point favorites, pretty much a pick. I think the Browns went straight up. I think they went straight up. Take the Browns straight up, money line to beat the commanders, minus 110 to cover the spreads. You can do that. You can double, double dip on it if you want. Let's bring up, hey, folks, for Betfred Sportsbook, January 1st. There it is. Ohio residents coming, baby. Sportsbook coming legal. We're almost there. We're almost there January 1st. All you got to do. And with the extra little bonus from our pals at Betfred Sportsbook, a chance to win an autographed Nick Chubb jersey. That's right. The man himself, number 24. Autographed Nick Chubb jersey. All you got to do is first step, well, in the description, show description, click on the link, registration link. Also, you follow the directions on Twitter because you have to retweet at AndyMC81 and at SickPodBrowns. You follow the directions there. It's a retweet. It's follow at SickPodBrowns. And it is make your first deposit, screenshot of your first deposit at Bedford Sportsbook through that link. Only through that link. You do it anywhere else, not going to count. You got to do it through the link, either in this show description or on Twitter there, and you will be entered to win a Nick Chubb autographed jersey. And even if you don't win, you're still getting those exclusive signing bonuses that you're getting. You're going to have a chance to win over a thousand bucks in bets. Only with Bet Fred Sportsbook through that link. So make sure you do that. Let's have some fun this weekend, folks. Let's have some fun. Go Browns. Let's hope we can have a fun little note. Send us, you, you ruined the Christmas. Let's, let's have us, you know, start the new year right and have some fun there. So thanks to Chase, to Fred, Browns versus Commanders. Go Browns. Go Buckeyes. We'll see you next week on the Sick Podcast with Andy McNamara. Happy New Year. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Andy McNamara on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.